And finally, we continue our look at the red planet Mars. For years, scientists thought they had cracked the mystery of the planet's iconic hue. They blamed it on dry, lifeless rust. But new research suggests the red planet's color might actually be a relic of its wetter past. Could Mars have been more Earth-like than imagined? And what does it all mean for the search for ancient life? The dusty mystery just got a whole lot deeper. Our final report explains. Mars has captivated human curiosity for centuries. With its striking red hue and dusty, barren landscape, it's no wonder it earned the nickname the Red Planet. Ancient civilizations associated its blood-red glow with war and deities, while modern scientists have sent spacecrafts, rovers and orbiters to uncover its secrets. But have you ever wondered why Mars is red? Until now, the leading theory suggested that the planet's surface was coated with hematite. It's a waterless form of rust. However, a new research suggests that Mars may have turned red thanks to a different water-containing mineral, potentially rewriting what we know about its history. Mars owes its iconic colour to iron oxide, better known as rust. But how did an entire planet get rusted? Scientists long believed that Mars's iron-rich rocks reacted with the atmosphere over billions of years, forming hematite. This then broke down into fine red dust. This dust, carried by Martian winds, coated the entire planet in its signature rusty sheen. But there's a problem. Observation from a spacecraft didn't detect clear evidence of water in Mars's iron oxide deposits. That raised a big question. If rust on Earth forms with the help of water, how did Mars manage to turn red without it? Recent research has turned this theory on its head. Scientists now believe that a different iron oxide called ferrihydrite might be the real culprit. Unlike hematite, ferrihydrite forms quickly in cool water, suggesting that Mars's rusting process may have started when liquid water was still present on its surface. To test their theory, scientists decided to make their own batch of Martian dust. Using data from multiple missions, including European Space Agency's Mars Express and NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, they synthesized dust with different iron oxide compositions. Then they ran it through high-tech grinders to match the size of real Martian dust particles, which, for scale, are about one hundredth of the thickness of a human hair. After analysing their lab-made dust using X-ray machines and reflectance spectrometers similar to instruments used in Mars orbiters, they compared it to the real Mars data. The results? Ferrihydrite, not hematite, was the best match for Mars's red dust. This discovery is a game-changer. If Mars's rust contains water, it means that water was likely widespread on the planet, much later than scientists previously thought. And where there's water, the possibility of past life becomes even more intriguing. The findings suggest that Mars may have started rusting billions of years ago. This aligns with a period when Mars was transitioning from a wet world, with rivers and lakes, to the dry, dusty desert we see today. Scientists believe volcanic activity, melting ice and water-rock interactions could have created the perfect condition for ferrihydrite formation. To truly crack the mystery, scientists need to analyse real Martian dust in Earth-based labs. Fortunately, NASA's Perseverance rover has already collected samples. Plans are in motion to bring them home through the Mars Sample Return Programme. If all goes well, by the early 2030s we might finally confirm whether Mars's redness is linked to a wetter past, and whether it once had conditions suitable for life. Until then, the red planet continues to keep its secrets, rusting away quietly under a dusty alien sky. Merci beaucoup. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. Namaste, Mr. President. Bharat Kelogon, Komeri Namaste. How many people generally follow you in interviews? Typically in a month, we have uh, viewers uh, up to 150 million. That's more than twice the population of France. And in the last two years, we had three billion viewers. So I say, Lohan, this is your chance to be famous. You're on first post. <laughs> yes. One word to describe your equation with Prime Minister Modi. Amitié. 
And as India and France work together, are you creating a new era of non-alignment in the technology space? India is a training superpower. One million engineers a year, more than all of Europe and the US combined. So we have that partnership. We have a partnership on the environment and the economy. We also have civilian nuclear programs. And that is something we've developed far beyond the France-India relationship. So we want to work together on AI. And then comes China with its deep sea, creating models at a fraction of the cost. Did that innovation take you by surprise? Did that breakthrough make you sit up and think, what, what did the Chinese do and how? But what did DeepSeek do? They took everything that was already available from the last AI model and then uh, they recalibrated it. So are you going to ban Chinese AI in France? So we don't have this American approach of banning tech because of where it comes from.